Well, hello and welcome. It's 2020. Yeah, it's 2020. My name is Jared Bendis. I'm the Creative New Media Officer for the Kelvin Smith Library here at Case Western Reserve University. And today I want to take you on a virtual tour of the Kelvin Smith Library. We're open. A few months we were closed, but we're always working behind the scenes. We want to show you what's different right now in the new and improved Kelvin Smith Library. First things first, gotta put on my mask. Well, I hope you can still hear me as I take you on a tour of the Kelvin Smith Library at Case Western Reserve University to see everything there is to see in this new normal. Now, this tour is a virtual reality 360 degree video. You can click and drag and look up and down and all the way around. In fact, don't look at me, I'm the most boring part of the library. The first thing you're gonna notice is that we have really good signage. We've really gone out of our way to explain every little thing that you might need to know. For instance, where's the entrance? Where's the exit? What should I do? What shouldn't I do? A lot of information, and we're trying to make it as easy to get to as possible. The first thing I need to do is get out my CWRUID. Right now, we are only open to faculty, students, and staff of Case Western Reserve University. We know this is a limitation, but with our reduced seat count, this is the only way to guarantee availability to the CWRU community. Let me reach into my wallet, find my ID, and unlock the door. Excellent. Now let's head inside. Oh look, the book drop is right up front. Now I don't have to go into the building just to drop off a book. And I can come in, swipe my ID again, and see how many people are allowed in the building and how much room there currently is. Plenty of room for me right now. Right off the bat, you're gonna see a lot of interesting things. A sanitization station and lots of signage telling you exactly where to go. If we come over to this sign, we can learn all about the reservation system now that all seats in the library are fully reservable. Oh look, it's Cramalot Cafe. Well, it's not the way it used to be. We are still open, but only with vending machines. Thank you very much. It's the only place in the library you're currently allowed to eat, which means it's the only place in the library you can take your mask off, but only for short periods of time. Cramalot's only available in 30 minute increments. It's just for quick breaks. So this is the food safe area of the library. Everywhere else is food free. And if there's no food, it's easy to keep your mask on. Here's the main service desk, nice and secure. Good for queuing, great signage. The library staff member has currently stepped away, but that's all right, there's also help at the welcome desk. Of course, some things in the library haven't changed. We still have self-checkout, which is awesome. And look, the laptop kiosk, where you can check out a laptop for use in the library. You will take note that the Brody area is currently closed. The seats were just way too close together to remain open safely. But look, the Friedman Center for Digital Scholarship. It's still open, it's just spaced out a little bit more. We have our AV workstations. We have our GIS statistical workstations. Our TV viewing stations are currently being upgraded as we figure out better and safer ways of sanitizing them. Our video conferencing room is currently being used by the RSLs as virtual consultation spaces. The OneTouch Studio is currently being redesigned and rebuilt to be even more exciting than it was before. Let's take a look inside the collaboration commons. Obviously, we can't have people working together in the collaboration commons, so instead, we've spaced everything out. Notice each seat has a QR code on it for reservation purposes, and for the most part, people are pretty good about keeping their distances. This is pretty awesome. And of course, we still have the Friedman Center collection of books. The VR corner is down for now because it's pretty personal technology, but researchers are still using it behind the scenes. We've also spread out and brought together all the scanning stations. We have flatbed scanners, sheet bed scanners, 
And look, we even have three kick scanners. So many scanners, each one with their own specialty. Because of the pandemic, we've had to put a pause on AV digitization and film digitization, as there's no really good way of sanitizing the equipment. We still lend technology at the Best Buy display table. One thing you will notice is we no longer lend headphones or webcams. Headphones just can't be cleaned. And webcams, well, everybody needs their own webcam these days. And don't forget Ohio Link. We're still lending books. We're still borrowing books from all over the state. And as we walk around the building, notice how every other seat has been removed. The remaining seats, however, are fully reservable. One of the more exciting changes is the music library has moved in, not just the books, but also the CDs. So even with all these little changes here and there, you can see how functional the library still is. sanitation stations throughout, well-spaced seating throughout, and clear signage everywhere you can see. Again, this is an active learning space in as safe an environment as we could create. Let's head upstairs. It's always a good time to look around. You'll notice that with the exception of the spacing, the second floor looks like it's always looked. Computers, books, tables, people studying. Well, except people are wearing masks. The library is always running multiple exhibitions. People don't realize how much work goes on behind the scenes to make all this happen. It may be off in the corner, but we can't forget about special collections. Some of the real treasures of the library. One of the more bizarre bits of trivia in the library is that in the Floristone Mather reading room, there's a fireplace. No fires, though. A quick detour through GovDocs, and of course the stacks are still open. A lot of people work in this building, and a lot of them work right behind these doors. Let's take a look. Even in here, we have to make sure that everyone stays protected. The 
doors are closed, the screens are raised, people have been spread out as far as they can be, others still work from home. People forget it's not just the books, it's not just the people working up front, and it's not just the students. The library is all-encompassing. This is my office. Now let's head up to the third floor. Ooh, before we do that, what about the classrooms? What's going on in there? More individual study spaces. And as you can see, the sign clearly says, no food or drink. Everyone's adapting to the new rules the best they can. It's always a good time to look around. They say the higher you go in the library, the quieter everything gets. And in this quiet study area, you wouldn't want to even drop a pencil without getting a dirty look. The group study rooms are too small to be shared safely. However, some library staff members who only have cubicles are using them as temporary offices. And now to the stacks. Our movable shelves have always been cutting edge, but these are now top of the line. Now this is very exciting. The water fountains have all been closed, but we still have the water refill stations where you can get clean water for your own bottle. We're also limiting only two people in the restroom at a time. They're pretty small anyway, it's not that big a deal. Now let's head down to the lower level and see some of the more secret places of the library. The lower level has the University Technology Care Center. Their queuing is excellent and they're in high demand. 
Like the other classroom, LL06 has been set up as individual study space. As the current student density has been fairly light, it's being held on reserve until a later date. Don't worry, the vending machines are upstairs. But it goes to demonstrate just how dynamic a space the library is. Things are always in flux, and usually for the better. Now to some of the more secret spaces. In addition to the mail room, down this hallway is the Preservation Lab, the Digitization Lab, and the Digitization Lab Annex. The coolest items and the funnest tech happen behind these closed doors. And now to the closed stacks. You know it's good when there's gloves on the wall. I get a real kick out of going through the Deweys. The books are so old, and the topics are so bizarre. I mean, they're topics, but a lot of fun down here. Well, that's enough of the lower level. Let's head back up. And as clear as the signage was on the way in, we also have very clear signs on how to get out. Well, there you have it. The Kevin Smith Library at Case Western Reserve University, open for business even during the pandemic, safely, securely, available for students, faculty, and staff to get their work done. Hope you enjoyed the little tour. Thank you very much.